This is Ali the Elephant, and I thought we'd get started with a scripture song. Oh, that's a good way to welcome everybody to Kid Life. What scripture? Ephesians 4.32 goes like this. <clears throat> Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. Doodly doo, da da da. Ephesians 4. 32. Oh, I like that, Ellie. And then I do this. Oh. <laughs> Woo! So we get the water of the word. You know, reading the Bible and, and Bible verses, they refresh us. I love that, Ellie. And then we get the real um, water. Uh-huh. Woo! You're going to spray my friends. I like that. Be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. Doodly do, ba da da da. Ephesians 4, 32. What a great way to welcome everybody. You want to say it? Welcome to Kid Life. Welcome to Kid Life. Come on in. Let's pray. Hi friends, it's me, Emily. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today. Please um, help us during the week and please um, let you um, protect us and let your angels follow us. And thank you, God, for everything you've done for us. Thank you for waking us up this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey there, my name's Chase Downfax. I was just checking out some of the online stories that were released today, and this one is big. It's a missing persons report. Larry Berry, the owner of Larry's Lots of Licorice store, has gone missing, and nobody knows where he is. You know what? I think I've become quite the investigator over these past few weeks. I think I can figure out what happened to Larry Berry, and I know exactly where to start. Lots of licorice headquarters. Excuse me, ma'am. How can I help you? I was wondering what you could tell me about Larry Berry. He's missing. Did he run away or something? <laughs> oh, no, he didn't run away. He was kidnapped, silly. What? Kidnapped? Yep, I saw the whole thing. Yesterday, I was walking across the parking lot and there was Mr. Barry lying on the ground. Lying on the ground? Was he asleep or something? No, it actually looked like he'd been beaten up pretty badly. Um, but I really wasn't paying attention. He was saying something like, ow, or call the doctor, or um, I'm hurting, help me. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I was on my way to get my nails done. You just left him there? Do you remember seeing anything else? Well, of course. A couple of hours later when I got back, I saw Mr. Barry being put into a car by, um, Mr. Sam Ariton. Sam Ariton? You mean the second most successful licorice salesman in town? He and Mr. Barry have been enemies for years. That's him. He totally picked Mr. Barry up and put him in his car and drove off with him. If you want to know where he is, then you need to find Mr. Sam Ariton and ask him. I definitely will. Thank you, miss. Well, this is Mr. Sam Ariton's house. I wonder what he knows about the disappearance of Larry Barry. Why, hello there! Larry Barry? What are you doing at Sam Ariton's house? And you're alive! Of course I'm alive! Thanks to Sam Ariton! What? I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, let me tell you how it all went down. I was on my way to work when these two guys robbed me. They took everything. My wallet, my phone, even the licorice in my pocket. I laid there for a while until my secretary walked up. She certainly was no help. A few more people that worked for me walked by, but they ignored me too. 
Apparently, they had better things to do than help a guy who was hurting. Then, out of nowhere, my biggest rival, Sam Ariton, showed up. He picked me up, put me in his car, then drove me to the hospital. Wow, that's the craziest story I've ever heard. It sure is. Sam paid for my hospital bills and even let me stay in the house until I was better. I thought for sure he would have left me in the parking lot. When I asked him why he helped me, even though he was my biggest rival for years, he said it was the right thing to do. I am forever grateful. Well, that's amazing. Thank you for your time, Mr. Barry. It's good to know that you're safe and doing well. You're welcome. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some licorice in the microwave. Sure thing. Interestingly enough, this story is almost exactly like one of the parables that Jesus told in Luke chapter 10. It's the parable of the Good Samaritan. Wait, Good Samaritan. Samaritan. Samaritan, I just got that. Anyway, you're going to be learning about the parable of the Good Samaritan in your lesson today. It's all about how you should treat everybody with kindness even the people you consider to be your enemies. Well, I better get back to work. I've got to let everybody know the facts I've learned here today. See you around. My name is Wiggy, Wiggy Pop, and I'm here to have a rockin' time teaching you what you gotta know. Today, we are talking about another parable that Jesus told, the parable of the Good Samaritan. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will care for my neighbor and be a good friend. Anybody can be your neighbor. I'm not just talking about the person who lives next door and comes over to borrow an item from your mum. Excuse me, uh, could I borrow a cup of sugar? I need to make a birthday cake for me cow. No! I'm talking about kids at school, in your neighborhood, wherever you go. Everyone you come in contact with should be treated with love and respect. They're all your neighbor. So every time, I mean, every time somebody asks you what you got to know, you tell them, I will care for my neighbor and be a good friend. And that right there is what you got to know. This is Wiggy Pop, and I'll see you next time. Rock on! <laughs> My name is Cornelius Carl. <laughs> I do declare, fall has arrived. That means it's time to play one of my most beloved games. It's a tradition that has been passed down for many generations in the Carl family. We call it the Candy Corn Shuffle. The rules are quite simple. You'll see a single delicious candy corn on the screen. It will then be hidden behind one of several pumpkins. Those pumpkins will get shuffled around. But you've got to keep your eye on the pumpkin with the candy corn. Now just let me get my spectacles and we'll get this game started. do so enjoy this game. If you know where the candy corn is, just shout it out. One, two, or three. Well done, but that round was easy as pie. Let's try another slightly more challenging version. Oh 
right, all right. You best have been paying attention. If you know where the candy corn is now, just shout it out. One, two, or three. Very impressive. But do you think you can keep up if we add a fourth pumpkin? Almost got confused on that one myself. Shout out. One, two, three, or four. If you know where the candy corn is at. Excellent attention to detail. Now, things are gonna get really interesting. Sweet marmalade, that was fast. If you kept your eye on the candy corn, then shout it out. One, two, three, or four. Well, I am impressed. That was some mighty fine work. But we've still got two more rounds to go. Were you able to keep an eye on the candy cone? If so, shout it out. One, two, three, four, or five. Sweet apple pie, you're right. Now, you'll need to bring forth all your powers of concentration and focus for this final challenge. faster than a hot knife through butter on the 4th of July. Do you have any idea where the candy corn is at? If so, shout it out. One, two, three, four, or five. I do declare you have done it. That was quite the sight to behold. Thank you all very much for taking time to play this game today. I have thoroughly enjoyed our time together.
Roberta anymore, so you can call me R. Artiste. Now, I am working on my greatest painting ever, but I'm starting to lose ideas, so I need to take a bit of a break. But while I'm taking my break, why don't you help me with today's power verse? See, the problem is, I sleepwalk at night, and last night I was painting the power verse, and I started using pictures instead of words. Now, I have no clue what it was supposed to say. So why don't you help me out? Let's look at it and see if we can find out what it was supposed to say. Well, we know this first picture. That is a bee. Be kind to each other. Now, what is this? Looks like we've got a couple pieces for one word. Let's see. This first picture, um, chicken nugget. No, not chicken nugget. Um, lunch. No, how about, um, it looks like a chicken tender. Oh, tender, that's a word. Let's try tender. Um, love. No, not love. What is that? It's, um, it's a heart. Oh, tender heart. Yes, maybe that's it. Tender heart Ed. Huh, who's Ed? No, no, wait. Tender hearted, that's a word. I bet that's it. Tender hearted. Now, what is this? Well, it's the number four, so maybe it's four gift. No, how about four present? No, that's not it either. Four giving. Oh, yes, four giving, that's it. For giving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Oh, yes, it's a you, you know, the other word for a sheep. Ephesians 4, 32. <gasps> yes, that's it. I'm so glad you could help me. Now we must make sure that we don't forget it. So everyone stand up and let's say it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. 
just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Ephesians 4, 32. Great job, everyone. Well, I have just finished something I have waited to do for my entire painting career. And that is replicate the most famous painting ever made. Maybe you've heard of the Mona Lisa. If you haven't, here is a photo for reference. Now, I have just put the finishing touches on my version of the Mona Lisa. I've called it the Lona Misa. Would you like to see it? All right, I know you would. It is amazing. So let's look at it together. Now be prepared because I think this is the greatest thing I've ever created. Are you ready? Here it is. I present to you the Lona Misa. Oh, wow. It is just Fabulous! I mean, really, look at it. It's beautiful. I think I'm going to hang this in my bedroom. Or maybe on the front door of my house. In my bathroom. I don't know. I'll figure it out soon. But thank you so much for your help on today's Power Burst. I'll see you later, boys and girls. Goodbye! <laughs>
so Jesus looks at the, the wire and says, so who in this story was the good neighbor? And the lawyer basically hanging his head is like, um, the man who had mercy, the man that, you know, the, the Samaritan. He didn't want to say it. He didn't even say the Samaritan. He's like, okay. He's, he's like, and so he got the message. Basically, Jesus is saying, um, because Samaritan was supposedly the enemy, right? Basically saying, uh, everyone's your neighbor. You love everyone, even your enemies. And there's actually a place in the Bible that says, love your enemies. It does. It says, love your enemies. Do good to those that hurt you. So love God and love all people, people that are not like you. Love all people. So today's lesson, that's what we're going to learn about, how to be a good neighbor, like a good neighbor, like the Samaritan. Like a good neighbor. Like a good neighbor. All right, that's the title of our teaching. We want to learn from this story, right, about Jesus, how we can be a good neighbor like the Good Samaritan. First of all, right, it's it's loving everyone, just knowing that we are supposed to show the same love. We're, gonna, we're supposed to love everyone and that that even our enemies, basically taking care, paying for, helping. That's the kind of love, right? So um, one of the first things we see in here, a good neighbor has compassion, right? So when the Samaritan saw the man beaten up, he, he cared, right? We don't hear that about the priest or the, the Levite. doesn't say that they cared at all. They just were caring about themselves and just walked around. So caring, when we see something that we are, you know, we're moved by it and that we care for others that are hurting, you know, even our enemies that we care. Um, but caring is not enough by itself, right guys? Caring is not enough by, ex by itself. A good neighbor takes action. Because if I care, but I don't do anything, it's really like I don't care, right? Um, so a good neighbor takes action. The, he cared, um, but then he did something. He helped him, right? He helped the wounds. He paid, you, you know, paid, and he did something. So um, I'm going to tell you actually a little story. It's something that happened to me one, one time. I was, um, had, oh, had a very busy night. Our oldest son had his homecoming dance, and we had his, you know, his date coming over with the mom. We were going to have pictures, and then we also had a party right after that for our middle son, a football party, and but the dog needed to be walked for just a, a little bit. So I was like, oh, quickly, I got 10 minutes. I'm going to walk out and get right back. And I was walking the dog. And all of a sudden, we have these walking paths. We have ten, we live in a townhouse, but there are these walking paths. And, and there was um, a person laying, like, on the path. And I was like, first of all, I didn't think at first they were hurt. I just thought that they're, they were stretching or something. But my first thought was like, I, I just don't have time to talk to anybody. I'm just going to turn around and just go the other way because I, I got 10 minutes. And, but the Holy Spirit, thankfully you guys see, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you. It says he'll, he'll guide you and, and, and your path and show you what to do. And sense to my Holy Spirit, nope, I stopped felt the Holy Spirit. Remember, it's not an audible voice where you hear, Anna, but it was just a, a knowing, nope, I need to go walk past her and see what's going on. I just felt like I was supposed to. Part of me was just like, no, I don't have time, right? Sometimes busyness can be the biggest enemy, right? It's like we do care, but we, we got to get everything done. Guys, ministering in the moment, that is such a big deal. We see um, okay, we're going to talk about that later. I'm going to go. So I felt like the Holy Spirit said, go by. So I listened to him. Thankfully, I don't always listen, but I did. And I walked on by and I saw that she was like crying. So I went down. I'm like, you know, are you okay? Can I, you know, can I help you? Um, and she just looked at me and told me that she had, um, she was hurting very badly on the inside and had taken um, some, done something, you know, taken some pills that were not good for her. And so I, I immediately, you know, helped her up, prayed for her. Um, we just kept talking, started talking to her about God, sharing the gospel as we're walking because I'm talking to her, talking to her. Um, I call 
Um, her, her mom just lived right down the street, so I was able to call her mom, connect her mom. We got her to the hospital and, um, and followed up and, and thankfully she's okay. She's well, I've been able to take her to church and gone over, gotten her books. And I've been able to, you know, to show her, continue to show her God's love and, and pray with her and, and, um, and, but, you know, I almost missed out on it like the other people. Because the other people might have just been like, well, I just, I, you know, hurry, 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 right? That's what I was about to do. And the cool thing is, is I got to be a part of that. And yes, did it put me behind? Did I, did I, you know, although those things are important, they're not as important, right, guys? And we see that Jesus does it time after time. You know, he, he stops and he takes time to minister to people all throughout the Bible. And that's a big part of the stories in the Bible are times when it's not things that he had planned. You know, Zacchaeus was in the tree. He takes, Hey, Zacchaeus, you're coming home with me today. And you'll, and you might not know these stories, but there's so many times in the Bible, Jesus takes time to talk to other people, people that other people don't think are important. And he takes time. So he stops in that moment. So a good neighbor, um, takes action, you know, doing what you can do. And the next one is a good neighbor makes a sacrifice. So the the Samaritan, he used his own money, didn't he? He used his time, but he used his money um, and to take care of supposedly would have been his enemy. So it takes a sacrifice, you know, to be a good neighbor. And, um, but I'm telling you what, guys, in the end, whenever you do anything to join with God, you are blessed because of it. And Jesus even says that, like in the Bible, he says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And so that doesn't make sense, but you are when you're joining with God and showing God's love. And like I said, have I done it every time? No. But when I have, you are blessed by it. And, and sometimes it might be overwhelming. You might be, there's so much need in the world. What do I do? Do what God puts in front of you. In this case, the Samaritan came upon. It's right there. Do what God puts in front of you. You are at your school for a purpose. You are at living in your house, in your neighborhood for a purpose. You are whatever, whoever around you. Those are the people you're supposed to minister to, whatever God puts in your path. And, you know, there's this great story that I love um, that it's like there were there were a bunch of starfish that had swam that had been pushed up on the ocean on the shore. Ton of starfish. And this little girl was just taking the starfish and just throwing them back into the ocean. And um, and somebody came up to her and was like, do you think you're really doing any good? I mean, look at all these starfish that are dying. And the little girl just took the starfish and just threw it back into the ocean, saving its life, basically. And she's like, um, I made a difference for that one, right? Because the enemy wants us to get kind of overwhelmed sometimes by the need, by people's needs. And we can just do what we can do. You know, uh, we just help however we can. Like the little the story about the little boy that when they're needing to feed over, like really over 5,000 people. And the little boy had his little lunch. He gave his little lunch. That, that's all he could do, right? That's all he had. And he probably would have thought, what is my little lunch with all these people? But Jesus took that little lunch and multiplied it and fed all the people. So we just do what we can, you know, whatever you can. That's what you do. You know, we just had a man come and talk. He helps children all over the world. And he had all these pictures on the table of children that don't have, you know, that need food. I mean, in other countries that, you know, don't have families, need food. And these two boys, actually, um, their brothers, their teenagers, they picked up the papers and they each want to, they're going to sponsor one child. You know, it is going to be a sacrifice for them. I mean, they have jobs, but they don't make a lot of money. And that's probably a big part of the money they'll make every month. But they're like, you know what? I can help this boy. And, and yes, it's going to be a sacrifice, but it's worth it, right? It's worth it. And you're going to see when we live a life like that, loving God and loving people and just doing what we can, that is really living guys. And we will get to see awesome things. And here's one more story. Okay. I just got to tell you this. So, and I might, I've probably told this story before. 
there's um, a story about Jim Elliott. Um, these five, these five men and with their families, their wives and families, they went down to to minister to this. Uh, they wanted to share the gospel, the good news about Jesus with this tribe that was known as the most violent tribe in all of the world. And they're like, well, we need to share Jesus with them. And so they 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 put their camp way far away, and they would take a plane and they would um, drop good things for them to try to you know make friends. And then they ended up landing one day. And um, basically what happened to them is that they were killed by these, this tribe. And, um, and they did have guns. They could have protected themselves and shot the people, but they had already decided ahead of time that if they were attacked, because they knew that was a possibility, that they would just fire guns in the air to try to scare them, you know, but they weren't going to kill, defend themselves. Right. I mean, that's big in itself. And they were stabbed with the spears. And um, but what happened is what we know now, actually, what happened in the midst of that is that when they were killed, that all of a sudden the natives have told the story that it was like there was this bright lights and all this singing. And it was they they knew it was something supernatural. And the women, you know, ran and went running into the village. Well, turns out that that tribe ended up getting really sick, really, really sick. And you know what happened? So the um, one of the wives and her little daughter and a sister of the pilot, they stayed. All the other families moved back after their, you know, and understandably so, their, their dads, their husbands were killed. They moved back home, but these ladies decided to stay. And we're like, we, we need to tell them about Jesus. This is what my husband and my brother were trying to do. We need to do that. And the, they actually, these women that had ran away from the tribe brought them back to the tribe. And these, these, this wife and brought her little girl and, um, and Elizabeth Elliot was the wife's name. And then the pilot sister, they went back and they nursed these tribe people back to health. They took care of them. These are the people that killed their husband and killed their brother and had their little girl with them and nursed them back to help. And eventually were able to share the gospel with them. And like 90% of that tribe gave their lives to Jesus. And literally the, um, the, the pilot's son grew up and they go around traveling with the man that killed him. They actually go around traveling, sharing the gospel with people. That is supernatural love, right guys? You are literally taking care of the person that killed your husband or your brother. And because of it, you get to share the gospel and all these people come to know God. Whew, that just is mind blowing, right? It's mind blowing. And am I saying I'm doing that? I'm not there yet. I want to be. I want to be like Jesus. That's what he did. He died for us, even though we're, we were his enemies, is what the Bible said. Sorry, guys, I'm going to cry because that's just, it's mind blowing. But what happens because of it is amazing. It's a supernatural kind of love that only comes from the Holy Spirit. You have to have that relationship with God and you have to have the Holy Spirit to have that kind of compassion for people that maybe have been mean to you. And that's what loving, that's why Jesus says that when you love your enemies, that is showing God's love. And people want to know why, why are you, why are you being kind to me? How, how can you do that? It's God's love. And guys, when we just even, and, and, and I'm not saying, okay, go out and you, you're probably never going to have to deal with that. But when you can be kind to a bully, not meaning don't, don't, it's not saying let someone abuse you, but when you can give a present to somebody, you know, that's done something mean to you, when you can smile and open the door for someone, it's the little things, whatever God puts in front of you, whatever, and ask God, what are things I can do to show, show your love to people? I used to just carry candy with me when I waited tables and I would just give it out to everybody every day. And there was this certain guy that actually just did not believe in God. And so he didn't like me because I would tell everybody that God loved him. And he would literally would just be mean to me on purpose and laugh about it. But I just loved him. I would just be like, hey, I'm praying for you. Hey, God loves you. He loves you. And I would give him the candy too, you know? And it really, 
it, it just it didn't even bother me that he was being mean because I knew he didn't know God. You know, that's why he's being mean. He doesn't know God. So guys, it's the little things. Just ask God. He'll give you ideas, ways that you can show his love to everyone. And we need his help because I mean, I'm telling you, when I've been hurt before, my first reaction is, you want to get that person back, right? And that's why we don't react. <laughs> we pray, help me, God, help. I forgive, I forgive. Like our scripture says, be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. So forgiving, I choose to forgive and loving, doing what you can to show God's love. All right. This is supernatural help. We supernatural love. We need God's help. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you um, that you show us you're the example. You died for us on the cross, Jesus and rose from the dead. And that's what happens when we choose to show supernatural love and with sacrifice. That's not the end. We're going to see amazing things from it. Just like when you rose from the dead and we pray, God, you help us, help us to love our neighbor as, as ourself, to show the love to people that we want people to show to us. It's supernatural. God, help us give us your ideas and your plans and, um, and help us care. First of all, Help us show the action you want us to take. And even if it costs something, help us to be willing to, to pay, to do what you want us to do. We need your help, Holy Spirit. And I pray right now for my friends. Maybe they're hurting and I pray you heal them, God. Heal their hearts. Maybe someone's hurt them. I pray you come in and heal them and restore them and, and help them see your love for them and, and pick them up, God, and renew them and give them the grace they need. We thank you, Lord, that you're real and you're with us. Your supernatural love, God, we need it so much to be able to love like this. Help us receive it so we can give it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God created everything in the universe, including you. You see, God loves you so much and wants to have a friendship with you. But there's a problem. We've all sinned. That means we've all done something wrong. Every single one of us. And that sin separates us from God. But there's good news. You and I don't have to be separated anymore. Because of God's great love for us, He sent His only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross and come back to life for us so that we can be made right with Him. All we have to do is choose to make Jesus the leader of our life. How? It's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit. Admit what you've done wrong and tell God you don't want to sin anymore. B, believe. Believe that God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven and that you are now right with God. C, confess. Confess to others that Jesus is the leader of your life and your best friend. Choose to make Jesus the leader of your life. Get to know Him and how much He loves you and make the choice to love Him back. What a great service today. It was so awesome. Well, I tell you what, Ellie, do you have a scripture song to send us away with today for the goodbye? I sure do. This is one I sing when I get afraid. Oh, that's a good one to remember. Um, this is Isaiah 31 10, and this is God talking to you. Okay, so how does it go? Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. And then it goes, I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you in my righteous right hand. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, 10. Oh, I love that. Do not fear, for I am with you. God is with us. We don't have to be afraid because of Him. And He helps us and He'll strengthen us and help us. That's a good way to go out. Have a good week. Love you guys. Don't be afraid. God's with you. That's right. We'll see you next week. Oh, wait. Do you want to spray them too? Okay, get ready. Here go. Woo! See you next time. Hi, boys and girls. Pastor Anna here. Hey, we want to ask you something. 
would you like us to pray for you? If you have a prayer request, something you want us to agree with you to ask God for, email us at kids at lifesourcechurches.com. Send us your prayer request and we will pray for you. We love you guys and we want to pray for you. So have a great week. Hey friends, I wanted to ask you, will you please like this video by clicking the thumbs up? And please hit the subscribe button if you like it. Then you can get all our videos. And also, can you feed me a worm, please? Thank you.